Hey everybody, it's Pastor Steve and Pastor Aaron of that church. And remember, what are you doing today? What are you stay studying on? What are you looking into? What are you believing? Matthew! <laughs> We're studying in Matthew today, and we want you to always be thinking about the end in mind. Why are we thinking about the end in mind? Jesus kept on bringing it yeah, up. Yeah, he did. The end from the beginning. He is the Alpha and Omega. You got all these things going on. Yep. We're just the reminders, right? Are we a mouthpiece for you to hear from? Yes. Yes. Hear. Hear. Hear God talking to you. Hear, hear Jesus God. talking mm -hmm. to you, right? Yep. Okay. So let's start off with a word of prayer and we'll get right into it. Today we're in chapter 10 of Matthew's Gospel, right? So Father... We want to hear from you. Mm -hmm. The people want to hear from you. We expect you. We welcome you in. We, we worship you. You are the true living God. And we thank you that you want us. That you, you need us to do what we're to, called to do in this time. Because we're your hands, your feet, your mouthpiece. We thank you for showing up and showing out in our lives. Confirming your word with signs following. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Here it is. Friday. Friday. Isn't that good? All right. And we're in chapter 10. But let's do a quick review of chapter 9. Wow. Just straight from the beginning of chapter 9. Jesus is asleep in your boat. What are you going to do with Jesus asleep in your boat? You better have something going on with yourself. You should be taking charge of your boat. If you don't take charge of your boat, don't think Jesus is going to take charge of your boat. It's you that has to take charge, just like Adam had to take charge in the Garden of Eden. You have to take charge of your boat. If Jesus said, go to the other side, by God, we're going. We're not going halfway and drowning. Who knew we were going to have boat lessons today? Right. He did. <laughs> so <laughs> in, in this, Jesus is asleep. Is he asleep in your boat? Then he's confident that you can do it. Remember, Jesus sat down on the throne next to the Father, awaiting Awaiting what to happen. His enemies. To be made his footstool. To be made his footstool. Isn't, remember, heaven is God's throne. And the earth is his footstool. Hmm. There's a lot of different similarities here. But what's happening in your life should be what Jesus is doing with his disciples. Teaching you every day. How to walk, how to do it, how to have what he had. That's what he wanted you to have. Why else would he teach you? A, a, a teacher doesn't teach somebody so they can know half as much as him. No, he expects them to come up to that full understanding and be like. To be like. And that's what's going to happen here at the end. We're going to, Jesus is going to come back and we're going to see that we're like him mm. okay i know i'm pushing all these buttons but make sure that you're tuned in make sure that you're tuned in to what he's saying to you because that's that's important down right. in verse 10 of ch chapter 9 it says and jesus reclined at table in the house behold many tax collectors and especially wicked sinners came and sat and reclined with him and his disciples. Do you think this is a normal thing? You can tell by the things that happen next. No, that's not a normal thing. Was he saying, no, you're wicked. You're a wicked sinner. You can't come in here. No, no. no. Those that need a physician were coming to the physician. Right, right. Those that needed help. I, I, I've been doing it the wrong way. Came to find out the ways of the kingdom. Do you see all this? He didn't push them away, and he's not pushing you away today either. And he never will. But you don't just, just, 
desegregate, no, <laughs> Dis take yourself out from him. Don't distance. distance yourself. There's where I was looking for that <laughs> word there. All right, then verse 13, go and learn what this means. I desire mercy. Why does he desire mercy? Because we all need it. Every person on the planet needs it. And that's his heart, is to show mercy. So therefore, that's our heart and our desire. You see that? What ways are we supposed to be moving forward with? And we're going to see some of that today. And hearing it straight from the Master's mouth. Right? And and be listening. We're, mm -hmm. we're talking about these things. Verse 21. Mm -hmm. For she kept saying... To herself, if I only touch his garments, I shall be restored to health. Now, why was she saying this to herself? Okay, if you think about what we've been talking about and what the word's been talking about is laying an axe to the trees of the thought patterns that you've had from the past mm -hmm. that the enemy has sown into your life, those what do we call those the 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 things that stop you along your way that the choke points the the choke points that you come to mm -hmm. in life get rid of those jesus is saying here by this woman taking and saying these things to herself we, she was replacing the thought pattern with if i get to him if i can touch the hem of his garment i'm getting healed right she had to say that instead of all the thoughts that had been bombarding her for years. I'll never get better. I'm only getting worse. You have to get rid of those and say after, other things. After many physicians, right. as the, some of the other ones say, mm -hmm. after many physicians, she's hopeless. Right. She came up with a hope and she was deciding on her end result. And I always want to... Yeah. And, and speaking it yeah. to herself. Yep. Maybe she was speaking it to her husband if she had one. What? You, should, you don't think? Wait, hold on. What? She could be married? Yeah. Hold on a minute here. What if she had kids? What if, what if, what if she's a young, young lady? All right. It's true. There, there's all of these ideas. Obviously, she had some funds. And she spent all that she had mm -hmm. on many physicians and never got better. So it's been some time. 12 years. Wow. Think of it that she, she changed all the bad thinking to good thinking. Started taking God's thoughts mm -hmm. because she started hearing about Jesus. She, she had some hope that if I could just get to him. And get in front of him and him pray for me, I could get it. Mm -hmm. And she was like, no, I, I can't go out in public. So I have to do this kind of stealthily. i got to sneak up behind him and, <laughs> and, and touch, touch that prayer cloth. That's where that anointing's at. I know it is. What was she thinking? And then as we saw all the way back here in uh, Matthew 14, 36, other people heard about this whole event that took place. And they came from all over because they saw Jesus was there. And they came and said, can we just touch the hem of your garment? Right. Can, can we just draw this wow. out from your, that which is upon you? I sure because would never put those together. He, he had this, you know, the, the, they called it a tent in, in a way. But it's, the prayer, it, shawl. The prayer shawl on him. So it was representative of that anointing that was on his life and that's what they grabbed a hold of and it identified him as as a rabbi or you know, teacher right teacher, yeah. so there's all kinds of good things in that chapter if you didn't hear it yesterday go back and listen to it one last thing verse 38 so pray to the lord of the harvest to to force out and thrust forth laborers into his harvest. Whose harvest is it? It's God's. Mm -hmm. And who's the helpers? Who's the workmen? You and me. We all, <laughs> all y'all, like we you know, like us to us say. And. <laughs> all us and, right? Okay. And then Jesus summons. This is where it starts in chapter 10 and start reading. 
And Jesus summoned to him his twelve disciples and gave them power and authority over unclean spirits to drive them out and to cure all kinds of disease and all kinds of weakness and infirmity. Did you ever think of how, how this actually worked? All right, so the anointing came on Jesus when he was baptized. Okay. As an outward display of an inward change. Do you get it? Mm -hmm. All right. So the, the anointing came upon his life for service. He was anointed as a prophet under the Abrahamic covenant, covenant right? And he's moving forward. He's, he's being led right up into the wilderness and gets the flesh out of the way so his spirit man can ascend and take its rightful place as head of his life. Mm. Do you see that? And working with the Holy Spirit, he set himself to only say those things he heard the Father say, only do those things he sees the Father do. That's his words from his own mouth. I'm, I'm just telling you what he said. Right. And as he comes to this point, what is he telling these disciples? Look, he says here to the 12 disciples and gave them power and authority over unclean spirits to drive them out and to cure all kinds of disease and all kinds of weakness and infirmity. Mm -hmm. Now, he gave them power, some of that which is off of himself. Do you see that? The Holy Spirit was on him. And here... He took and and put, placed hands on them. Do you, you see something like this back in Moses' day? God said, I'm going to take some of that spirit that's on you and put it on these heads of the, hmm. the, the people. As Jethro, his father-in-law, said, you need help. Yes. You need people working along with you here right. to do the work of the ministry along right. with you, to hear some of these lesser you know, uh, judging accounts and you hear the hard ones, all right? And by that spirit upon them, it took, say, dumb people and made them smart overnight. Smart enough to, to be judges over the people. Mm. Do you see that? And here, some of that spirit came on those disciples. This is why they're called Christians. Christians. Little, little Christ. Christ. Yeah. Little Christ running around saying the same thing. Remember, saying the same thing came from even all the way back in Revelation where the, the enemy is empowered because the people of the world started all saying the same thing, empowering the, the Antichrist, the, empowering the devil, empowering the beast, right? And I, I'm not comparing God to... Him. But I want you to see how he got the idea from God because he didn't ever come up with anything new. He took and twisted whatever God had. This is what God has. All right, let's go on. Now, these are the names of the 12 apostles, special messengers. First, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, James, son of Zebedee, and John, his brother. Philip and Bartholomew, Nathaniel, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, Judas, not Iscariot, Simon, the Canaanian, and Judas Iscariot, who also betrayed him. Jesus sent out these twelve, charging them, Go nowhere among the Gentiles, and do not go into any town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, preach saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, drive out demons. Freely without pay you have received. Freely without pay charge, give. Take no gold or silver, nor even copper money in your purses, belts. And do not take a provision bag or a wallet for a collection bag for your journey, nor two undergarments, nor sandals, nor a staff, nor the work for the workman deserves his support, his living, okay. his food. So to go back to even verse 5. So here, where did all these guys come from? We didn't hear that he selected any of them. <laughs> right. All right. In this so account. 
in, in this account. So, you know, you take it with a grain of salt. You got the other Gospels. You can go look up where they all mm -hmm. got elected. Mm -hmm. All right. And so here I want to come down and I say, say this about this next, but rather go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Now the time of the Gentile, Jesus even said to the Syrophoenician woman, the time of the Gentile is not yet. So that's our time. This is our time. Do you see it? But he's telling his disciples, now you go to the Jewish people, you don't even go down the road toward the Gentile villages and things, right? right? You, you stay at the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Why are they lost sheep? Why, why are these lost? So consider some of these things he's saying because there's things in each one of them and we're not going to touch on every one of them. I don't know them all. But pay attention to what you're listening to. And here it comes down in verse 7 and it says, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. That's what we're supposed to be saying. That's what they were saying back then. The Jewish people were taught. They understood. If you say that, oh, I know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. You're talking about the Messiah coming. Right. And they were looking. They were looking for the Messiah's return. Right. And so it keyed thoughts in for them. If we go and say this to some people that have no idea what, what do you mean the kingdom of heaven? What heaven? Is there a heaven? They're questioning many things. Right. It doesn't mean the same. But to people that are taught this already, they, they grasp it. They have thoughts already in line with that. And they run with those thoughts. Do you see how thoughts comes in play with oh, everything? Everything. All right. And then it comes down. And boy, I, I like this. And this is this is part of our giving message today. And, and here it says, freely, without charge, give. That's the end of verse 8. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, drive out demons. Freely, without pay, you have received. Freely, without charge, give. This is what he's telling his disciples. Mm, right. Now, now don't go at this thing trying to get something. Right. You're going to give something. This is our giving message for today. And, and believe me that God is all over it. He wants you to understand that you're to be a giver. Why? Because God is a giver. Mm -hmm. He gave the most precious possession he had to us, which was Jesus. Mm -hmm. And with him, will he withhold any other good thing? No, no not at all. Mm -hmm. And so all of that comes into provision. And here he says in verse 9, Take no gold, nor silver, nor even copper money in your purses, your belts. What? These disciples got money, got gold, got silver, got mm -hmm. copper money? That is such a good point. Obviously. Wait a second. Why does why does these poor wow. disciples that are living out in the middle of nowhere with Jesus in the in the wilderness living under the you know the dew of the night? Wait a second. <laughs> uh -uh. No, this isn't what he's talking That's about. He's good. not who he's talking to. He's saying, now look, boys. I got to teach you some faith here. You got to work with me here. Mm -hmm. Don't take anything with you. Not even changes the clothes. All right. What are we going to do about underwear? We got to change underwear every day. Don't you know that, Jesus? <laughs> Wait. The workmen will be provided for. Right. Is what he gets to. Yeah. And look and see that Jesus is like, come on, boys. Put that money belt away. Leave it here. Put, go on, put it over there. Now pile it all up and leave it here. <laughs> Did they have guards standing around to watch all this stuff that they didn't take with them? Did you think of any of these things? Maybe they it's, left it at Peter's house. <laughs> it's <laughs> kind of like, they. Jesus has got a home. Yeah. He's got servants. Possibly. He's got people working with him, working for him. If he's doing a full-time ministry, he ain't got time to see to the odd. <laughs> I know, I said it differently just to grab your thinking there. He, he wasn't out trimming trees. He wasn't out having to plunge the toilet. He had people seeing to things. And so did these men. Wow. Because they, they all had houses. 
if the the crippled gentleman had a house that he could go home to, these people had a house to go home to. Later on, Jesus says to him, look, if you've left anything for my sake and for the gospel's sake, you're going to receive a hundredfold return. Right. In this, In this life. life. Yep. And, and Peter, Peter, after one of those statements right around that place, says, then who can be saved? He's, Jesus got done saying, the rich, how hardly can mm -hmm. they enter into the kingdom of heaven? He was concerned. He was like, then who can be saved? We're all rich. How can we be saved? <laughs> all right. I know I'm stirring the pot, but think about these things. It's right there before you, but we keep reading over it and reading right. over it and reading over it. And God wants you to see it, think about it, conceive. He can work with you in the state that you are and then not leave you there, but bring you right. up. Yep. All right. And he's involving us when we give, when we receive what he gives us, because it says he gives to us freely and we can give freely. Uh, verse 11 is where we ended. And into whatever town or village you go, inquire who in it is deserving and stay there at his house until you leave that vicinity. And this is something else. Who is deserving? Who's deserving of God to come down and bless him? That's what they're talking about. Are you deserving? You are because of Jesus. God loves you as much as he loves Jesus. That's what Jesus said at the end of John. He did say that. Look up some of these things and change your thoughts. Hmm. Because if, if you have thoughts that, oh man, Jesus was poor. I got to be poor. So I got to give all my stuff away. That's what Jesse Duplantis did when he started his ministry. He gave everything away because that's what people told him. Right. The church was telling the people yep. back then. And those are lies sown into the church to make the church ineffective, wow. unable to do. Here, if, if you were supposed to have camels back then, that was the best mode of transportation to go across the deserts from town to town. Do they have camels? They, they, you don't ever hear them having camels. That was the, right. what, what about boats? They had ships, many little ships were with him, it says at one point, as he's crossing over. Does that mean he kept on getting more and more ships so more and more people could go with him? Maybe. Or were, or did everybody just have ships back then? That's possible too. <laughs> Maybe little boats. I don't know. But think about these things because it's freedom for you. Mm. Freedom from the lies the enemy has sown. All right, keep right. going. And whatever will not, whoever will not receive and accept and welcome you, nor listen to your message as you leave that house or town, shake the dust of it from your feet. Truly, I tell you, it shall be more tolerable on the day of judgment for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah than for that town. So, so I want you to answer this thing for yourself and think about these words. He said... Whoever is deserving, whatever house is deserving, let your peace. Peace to them was nothing missing, right. nothing broken. Right. Power of God coming on your household to see to everything. Right. All right. So that's the peace they're talking about. But whoever's not deserving, not deserving, it's a heart condition. That's, that's what that's about. Think about those things and put that together for yourself. All right. Behold, I am sending you out like sheep in the midst of wolves. Be wary and wise as serpents, and be innocent, harmless, guileless, and without falsity as doves. All right. Now, those are some some staggering things there. We talked about this yeah, the other did. day. What yeah. did we talk about? Well, you just we were quoting the verse, and we hesitantly said, wise as serpents. And we're like, <laughs> well... I <laughs> that was in the midst of one of these. Yes, yep. So realize that here, God is saying, now look, you, you have to be as wise as a serpent. You, you have to be as wise as the, the wicked one himself. You have to be wise as the people out in the world so you're not taken advantage of. That you're not just put out for no good reason. 
You have to know what your rights are in the kingdom and put down the enemy. Stop the enemy from putting you out. Right. You're to put the enemy out. That's taking dominion like Adam was told in the garden. You see all of that? And so this all flows together. And as it comes down in uh, verse 15, ending mind. That's what I have written end, there. End mind. End in mind. He's talking about truly, I tell you, it shall be more tolerable on the day of judgment for the Lord the land of Sodom and Gomorrah than for that town. He's talking about the mm -hmm. end in mind. Right. He's, he's, he's talking today as with the end in mind. And we're always to be looking for the soon coming return of Jesus, right? All right. Be on guard against men whose way or nature is to act in opposition to guard to God. For they will deliver you up to councils and flog you in their synagogues. And you will be brought before governors and kings for my sake, as a witness to bear testimony before them and to the Gentiles, the nations. Hmm. But when they deliver you up, do not be anxious about how or what you are to speak, for what you are to say will be given you in that very hour and moment. For it is not you who are speaking, but the Spirit of your Father speaking through you. All right. Back in verse 16, it was talking about an Antichrist spirit. Now, Antichrist is anything against mm -hmm. the anointed one, right. the anointing. That's what you are. You're Christians, little Christians, little anointed ones yep. running around with the same anointing on you. Do you see that? And you were in verse 19 there? I was ready for 21. Okay. Well, oh, I was, I was listening. All right. So then in uh, 19, it says... Well, let's go back up here to 18. And you will be brought down, um, brought before governors and kings for my sake as a witness. Now, you might be concerned about being brought before kings and, and what did it say there? Uh, governors and kings. Right. The, the heads of lands. You're bring, being brought there for a reason to give testimony to them. God doesn't want just the, the people on the streets to receive the message. He doesn't want just the widows and the orphans to receive the message. He doesn't just want the lay people, the, the servants, the, the, those that are doing all the work just to hear the message. He wants everybody from yep. the top yep. all the way down to hear the message preached how are you going to get before some of them if if you don't have a reason to be there yep. you're not going to get there that's why we all have to take our place because we all have a different sphere of influence or different people that we can be around do you see how all that works together yeah. all right and then we come down to verse 20 and it says for it is not you who speak it, who's speaking, but the Spirit. So you see how the Spirit, Jesus is saying, is on you. Yeah. The Spirit was on the disciples. That's, this is Jesus talking to his disciples. And here, you see it in verse 23, and all the way at the end, uh, all the way into, I didn't mark it, I guess. Um, oh, it was verse 1 of chapter mm -hmm. 11. You, he's still talking to his disciples, commissioning them, telling them certain things before they go out into right. the world to be prepared, to, to be prepared for what, what they're going into. Right. He's letting them know something before it happens. So look, that, that's what this is all about. It's, it's training up his disciples, you and me, to go out and do the work of the ministry. Do you see that? Okay, here we go. Verse 21. Brother will deliver up brother to death, and the father his child, and children will take a stand against their parents, and will have them put to death. And you will be hated by all for my name's sake. But he who perseveres and endures to the end will be saved from spiritual disease and death in the world to come. All right, now you've seen how he brought it all the way as if he got into talking about the future. That's talking about our time. 
Right. It was talking about our time all the way to the end of time. There's a time time slot that we're living in. Right. And right? like an age. And well, not just age, but yeah, the time age. All right. And then there's going to be other time slots. The, the rapture is going to happen. Then the seven years, right? The the last three and a half are going to happen. The thousand year reign of Christ. And then the white throne judgment's going to come. All of those things line up, but he's talking about the end. The end. All the way from this beginnings, where he's sending out his first disciples to go into the world to do the work of the ministry. Do you see that? And are these all pastors, prophets, evangelists, teachers? It's, it's the body of Christ going. That's what you're seeing. They haven't taken places as being over a church. They haven't taken places as being right. a prof prophet. They haven't taken these places as of yet, but this is the whole body of Christ. Do you see this? Yeah, representative of. Now, yeah. as we get into the rest of this, pay attention. This is talking about our time, our, our day, as per se. Mm -hmm. All right, here we go. Okay, 23. When they persecute you in one town, that is, pursue you in a manner that would injure you and cause you to suffer because of your belief, flee to another town. All right, I want to talk about that because people are concerned about that. I'm concerned about that. All right, if you're concerned, have, have faith about yourself. He didn't say you're going to get. He said when they persecute you, not if. Not when, I'm sorry, not if, but when. Right. Okay. So when they pursue you as if to injure you, as if means right. they it haven't could. injured you yet. Right. God will make a way of escape for you to get That's out good. of that situation, That's just good. like they made for the Apostle Paul right. to get out of that situation and get unto. I'm talking about from the beginning of when he was called. He got knocked off the horse, got born again, got hands laid on him, had his eyesight restored. And here he, he, he was strengthened, went in and started preaching the same gospel that Jesus was preaching, bringing out stuff that they hadn't seen before because he knew it better than all of them. And here he was reliant on the Holy Spirit. And all of this comes down to say that here, you don't have to go through it, but there's a, a provisioning for the martyrs. There's a provisioning, there's a better resurrection for the martyrs. Do you see that? Yeah. There's rewards for certain things that you get into, and that's if you are willing. Are you willing? Will you? Or will you keep your, you, you want to be protected? You've seen how Jesus goes through his three and three or three and a half years of ministry there and isn't touched. You can have that same thing. Or you can go through the end and give yourself up. Mm. Lay down. No one takes my life from me, Jesus said. Exactly. I lay my yep. life down. Yep. All of these things are in here if you think about it. Which way do you want to go? You can have Psalms 91 working in your life all those days of your life. You can then come toward the end and give up your life. And I, I see that in uh, Peter's life. I see that in Paul's life. Paul, Paul went through a bunch of things there. He got into certain circumstances, things that he could God have kept him from those things. There's a discussion even in there that he's having with those elders around him. And at one point they're saying, don't go in there, Paul. Don't, don't go in there. And here, he's even raised from the dead. Well, it wasn't his time to die. Oh, you mean we can choose when we die? Well, wait, you can be taken out. That's what he had happen. He was taken out yeah. and the disciples stood around him prayed over him, and he raised him from the dead. He was stoned to death. 
All of these things are in here saying that you can go both directions. Which way are you going to choose? Mm. What are you going to believe right. God for? Right. Okay, keep on going. Verse 23. When they persecute you in one town, that is, pursue you in a manner that would injure you and cause you to suffer because of your belief, flee to another town. For truly I tell you, you will not have gone through all the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. A disciple is not above his teacher, nor is a servant or slave above his master. It is sufficient for the disciple to be like his teacher and the servant or slave like his master. If they have called the master of the house of Beelzebub, master of the dwelling, how much more will they speak evil of those of his household? Now you're of his household. These are disciples he's talking to. You're a disciple that he's talking to in this. And he's saying, look, you can be as I am. The word says, as Jesus is in the world, so are we. Yep, in this world. Do you see that? Yeah. And here, he's saying, sufficient for a disciple to be like his teacher. Mm. Remember, Jesus is going to return. And it says that we're going to be like him. Mm -hmm. We're to be like him now. All right, keep on going. Okay. So have no fear of them, for nothing is concealed that will not be revealed or kept secret that will not become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light. And what you hear whispered in the ear, proclaim upon the housetops. Now Jesus is saying, look, you're going to hear things from me. You're hearing things from me now. You have heard from me already. Mm -hmm. The spirit that's upon you is going to be saying things to you. And here, didn't it go through? Don't worry about what you're going to say if you're brought up before these kings. Because it's going to be the Holy Spirit speaking through you. Mm -hmm. Don't preconceive what you're going to say. Go in there begging for your life or mm -hmm. something. Giving up, you know. Stay on the winning side. Is what I mean by that. Mm -hmm. So, he who holds to and endures to the end. That's what I want you to do. That's what God wants you to do. That's what Jesus is expecting and teaching you to do. Verse 22, you see that. And then it comes down and it says, tell all I tell you. Everything that Jesus has told you from his word, go and tell it. Right. Okay. Okay, verse 28. And do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul but rather be afraid of him who can destroy both soul and body in hell, Gehenna. Now, who is that? It's God. As, as you see that, don't worry about who can hurt this body. God is your protector. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they didn't even want to bow to, they weren't going to have any other God before God. The first four is all about how you go toward your God. Right. The first four com commandments, right. right? Of the Ten Commandments, right? And that those four is what they were holding to because they were going to do it right before their God. And they were trying to do it right to man. And that's why they're talking easily with this. Uh, here, they didn't guard what they were saying to the king. They were telling them straight up. We're, we're not saying this some sugar-coated way. We're telling you, if, if, if you throw us into the, to the fiery pit, we're, we're still not going to bow to you because it's not right before our God. Right. Do you see all that? Yep. You got to hold to something. If you, if you don't stand for something, you're going to fall for everything. That's what they say. All right. Verse 29, are not two little sparrows sold for a penny? And yet not one of them will fall to the ground without your father's leave, consent, and notice. But even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, then, you are of more value than many sparrows. Therefore, everyone who acknowledges me before men and confesses me out of a state of oneness with me, I will also acknowledge him before my father who is in heaven and confess that I am abiding in him. Now, isn't that good? oneness with the father that's what jesus had 
Jesus had oneness with the mm -hmm. Father. That's what wow. we are as disciples. Yeah. He's talking to the 12 disciples here. He's talking to you and me. Have oneness with your Father. Right. All right. When you're going. sent out, these are your directives. These are where they're going to help you be in line. That's right. Verse 33. But whoever denies and disowns me before men, I also will deny and disown him before my Father who is in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace upon the earth. Wait a second, Jesus. <laughs> You're not bringing peace upon the earth? What? I thought you were all about peace and love and joy and, and happiness here. <laughs> Wait a second. Wait, did I sign up for the wrong group? No, no, you, you came to the right Bible study here. We're talking about Jesus talking to his disciples and you're one. And as we hear this, we think, what? You didn't come to bring peace. Mm -hmm. Then what did you come to do? He's getting ready to tell <laughs> you. Do not think that I have come to bring peace upon the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to part asunder a man from his father and a daughter from her mother and a newly married wife from her mother-in-law. And a man's foes will be they of his own household. Now, Jesus just took a, a statement from Micah 7, 6 and brought it into the new covenant and said, look, this is what this was talking about. This is the way a disciple is. This is the way my children are going to be. This is the way you're to walk. And here, look, are you going to have it all peaceful in your household? Hopefully. Hopefully everybody is listening to the Father. But if they're not, this is this is the outcome. Do you see it? Keep on going. And he who loves and takes more pleasure in father or mother than in me is not worthy of me. And he who loves and takes more pleasure in son or daughter more than in me is not worthy of me. Now do you see what he's saying? He's saying, now look. You can have only one person in the number one slot of your life, over your life, and that's the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. which are one. Right. They're the only one that you can have as Lord over you. First place. First place. Yeah. All right. And now, now you go ahead. And he who does not take up his cross and follow me cleaves steadfastly to me conforming wholly to my example in living and if need be in dying also is not worthy of me wait a second he hasn't died on the cross yet do they know what he's talking about Probably do not. you know what he's talking about <laughs> you saw, you read some of the back chapters of this book didn't you you know how it ends and here you're seeing that he's talking about pick up your cross wait what what cross <laughs> Jesus is saying, take yeah. unto you my ways of doing mm. and being right. Matthew 6, 33. Yep. We saw that just the other day. First, seek ye first the kingdom of God. His ways, his righteousness, his ways of doing and being right. Right. All of these things come into play with what he's saying right now. Look, I'm saying... There's a time coming that I'm going to be crucified. I have a cross to bear that is mine mm. to bear. I'm going to lay my down my life down on this cross. Right. Nobody takes my life from me. Exactly. That's what he's saying yeah. to you. Nobody has to take your life from you. You can lay your life down mm. for others. Right. And that's what we're to do. Does that mean we're supposed to do it unto death? Yeah, we're all going to die. One way or another, are we all going to get taken up and out of here? Yeah. In the rapture or some way, you're leaving this planet. You're right. leaving this body for a while. Right. Do you see that? And what I want you to see is he's talking about take up this cross. What cross, Jesus? This way of doing life in the kingdom. That's all he's been talking about. For chapters now. He gave you verse after verse after verse of the the orders of the kingdom. The constitution. The constitution yeah. of the kingdom. And here he's going, 
he's spent a whole chapter talking about mm -hmm. to his disciples now this is what's going to happen to you out there this is how you have to be this is how you're going forward this is this is it you have to do it my way make sure you're paying attention okay yeah verse 39 whoever finds his lower life will lose it the higher life and whoever loses his lower life on my account will find it the higher life he who receives and welcomes and accepts you receives and welcomes and accepts me and he who receives and welcomes and accepts me receives and welcomes and accepts him who sent me now this is sowing as we take our time we study these things out we stay before the father we pray over all this we we set ourselves to hear from him and then speak what he says right that you can how how you take it is your reward that you get it now if you take it as god speaking to you going through these scriptures mm -hmm. with you jesus is just taking and walking you through line upon line and saying look this is what I'm saying here. Right. This is what I'm talking about. This is what you need to do in your day, the day that you live, whether it's it's uh, 2022 or 2042, two, 200 million, whatever. <laughs> it doesn't matter what day it is. This is still mm -hmm. functioning for you as a disciple if you take it to yourself. If you don't take it to yourself, taking his thoughts his ways of thought, go back to Isaiah 55 and read that. He's talking about these very things there. And he's been talking about this since chapter 3. All these same things in the Matthew's Gospel. And here we're almost at the end of chapter 10, and he's still talking to the disciples. Keep going. It's so helpful when you can read it all almost in one sitting. Not that we've read it all in one sitting, but... When we, when we reflect on what we've read and we do reviews and we even go back and read the first chapters as we're going into the next one, mm -hmm. you, you see a lot more. It's mm -hmm. really interesting. And it's, it's great to see what God's telling us in it. Yeah. Verse 41, He who receives and welcomes and accepts a prophet because he is a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. And he who receives and welcomes and accepts a righteous man because he is a righteous man, shall receive a righteous man's reward. And whoever gives to one of these little ones in rank or influence, even a cup of cold water, because he is my disciple, surely I declare to you, he shall not lose his reward. We're talking about reward. Jesus is talking about reward. Right. Read, read verse 1 of chapter 11. Okay. When Jesus had finished his charge to his 12 disciples, he left there to teach and to preach in their Galilean cities. Do you see? He was talking that whole chapter to his disciples, you and me, right. about how to live this life right where you're at. Right. Wow. And doing what? Going forth and loving on people. Telling them what? The kingdom of God is at hand. Right. you got to teach them what that even means. Mm -hmm. There's, there's things that they need to know that God is not angry with them. He's made a way for their escaping hell. Right, That's which, coming. Include, which includes what John the Baptist came preaching, which was to repent, change your way of thinking, your, your way you're going, and go toward God. Do you see all this, how it flows every bit of it together, yeah. all the way to this point where Jesus sends out the 12 to go before him into the cities he's getting ready to go into, and here, they are to gather up. They're, they're going to stir up the people there in mm -hmm. their way of their minds mm -hmm. so that they are thinking rightly. Healings are going to take place. People are going to get delivered. You're going to see the power of God functioning through the disciples before Jesus gets there. <laughs> All right. God is so good to us. <laughs> All the time. Thank you, Lord God, for everything that you've shown mm -hmm. us today. Thank you. Thank you for coming in and showing us these things. Yeah. We always want you to remember, and God always wants you to remember, that God, God loves, loves you, you, and, and we, we love, love you, and, and Jesus, Jesus is Lord. Lord. Now take your place as you take his anointing to, to your, your world. world to finish that offering message. 
God has made the way for us to move forward the the body of Christ with with helpers that's coaches the 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 encouragers those the pastors set in place so that they can help everybody understand see it right and and move out in the way that he wants them to we can help one another right in we, the body we all help one another right. and here he's going to get to a point and be saying different things but i wanted you to see this this offering message that he said in here about giving and you you go into the house give your greeting why are you giving a greeting because their greetings were different back then when you walked into a jewish right. person's house it was may the peace of god come right. upon this house right. I, I don't know the whole prayer that 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 shalom, they say, right? right? Mm -hmm. They they would say shalom, which which means nothing missing, nothing broken. Right. That peace that passes all understanding. And then wouldn't the person of the house agree, uh, say I receive it or something like that? Right. Yeah. And so there's different things here, but when you're giving that, you're declaring something yeah. into people's lives. Right. That's good. You're yeah. giving them yeah. something. Yeah. When when James and John, uh, Peter and John came to the at the hour of prayer in Acts two, uh, it says that they uh, Acts three, Acts three or four, they they go up at the hour of prayer and here they come and here's this lame man that that's been laid there every week every day to collect mm -hmm. alms. Here, silver and gold I don't have for you, but that which I have. He declares something to him. Rise up and walk. And they grasp a hold right. of him and started raising him up. And he'd be like, whoa! And then when the Holy Ghost came upon him and quickened his body to be strong enough to leap for joy. After all those years of not. <laughs> There's a lot more to just healing that happened there. But he wants those things to happen through your lives. Right. And you're the giver he wants to use. You're the giving that he's giving. He's giving you to the world around about you. That's Do you good. see that? Yeah. The anointed one wants you to be a disciple that he wants to give you to your world that's around you. That you'll spend time in his word. Get the, the junk out that the world has sown into you. And and get past those, those barriers that would keep you from praying for other people. Mm -hmm. Keep you from being so shy you can't even say a word to somebody. Right. I was like that. God can work miracles in your life and then take you across the street and work miracles in their lives. Yeah. Sometimes it takes a while. Sometimes people don't want to let you into their lives, but until they see you walking in faith for a while, that you're lovely, that you're not going to hurt them. Right. People, people have been out there and been hurt with church hurts. Asked to leave to churches. That shouldn't be happening, but it, it's but it in does. the Word. Mm -hmm. There's certain things in the Word and one of the, some of those things are in the Word. You have to, I'm not going to get into all that. <laughs> Realize that God loves you and he wants the best for you. And that's, that's that offering message that I wanted you to see today. God wanted you to see that today. That you're the gift he's given to the world mm -hmm. around about you. You're right? That's good. That's really good. Okay. We already said all that good stuff. We'd say it again. God, God loves, loves you. And we love, love you. And, and Jesus, Jesus is Lord. Now take your place. As you take his anointing to, to your, your world. Bye-bye. Have a good weekend.